We're back. Sorry about last week's episode. Uh, I was having a fine morning. Uh, it wasn't like I was having a bad day and just pooping on the show. But uh, anyway, we're here. Patreon.com slash Talkville. If you want to support the podcast, we had a great guest last time. Um, top tiers get to be a guest. Some, you know, we, we pick them and uh, there's we get shout outs and and a lot of other stuff. And it's a great community. Patron, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Talkville. Uh, you can also go to my Instagram at the Michael Rosenbaum and go to Linktree and you'll see cons that Tom and I are going to cameo uh, Talkville podcast stuff for merch inside you online for uh, merch. A lot of other stuff. We're doing a small con in New Jersey. Make sure you get your tickets now. Let's rock this place in New Jersey in October. And we'll also be doing a live podcast for Talkville in May. So look out on that link tree because it's coming up. But let's now get into the episode. And a real quick plug, my new uh, product. It's Puppy Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath. It's You just put drops uh, in your dog's water. It's tasteless, odorless, and their breath is much better. And I give Blanche and Charlie it. Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath on Amazon. So check it out. Um, hey, hey, Ryan. Ryan, just a quick question. Um, I'm, you're, you're a smart guy. And, and the fact that Michael's selling puppy fresh breath and then also launching his fart book. Isn't that, isn't some irony in there? Yeah. Pick a side. Is it uh, stank or no stank? Well, it, pick, a, pick, pick a side. Uh, I'll leave that to the experts. <laughs> uh, no, no, by okay. the way, the book's going to be fantastic. Comes out this fall. And I uh, can't wait for you to see it. Simon and Schuster's putting it out. And um, I haven't really talked about it. But that's awesome. But Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath. Check it out. It's on Amazon. And uh, you have a, there's a picture of me on the bottle and my doggies. Without further ado, let's get into it. Season four, episode 14, Crypto. And a big shout out to Blanche, who my dog, who was here. Oh, it wasn't you. Yeah. Oh, it sounded like you. Yeah. But that was Blanche. She does, I was confused. She's around me long enough to know my mannerisms. Yeah. No, it's really weird. She's like your cadence and everything. She has really, a shinier coat than I do. It was crazy. Title Crypto aired February 16, 2005. Oh. James Marshall was the director, so you know these are going to be long days. Writers, Luke Schloss, Shellhaus. Guest star, Nolan Gerard Funk as Zach Greenfeld. Diego Klattenhoff as Josh Greenfeld. Bud the Dog as Shelby. Jane Seymour as Genevieve Teague. Erica Durant as Lois Lane. When a rough Luther Corp test gone wrong leads to a spree of canine robberies, Clark must save the family. Wow, this is, uh, you know, uh, you know, here's the thing. I'm not going to say too much, but I want I thought I was going to absolutely hate it. But there were some there were some nice moments. It was uh, I think it's better than the last episode. I mean, I think you're a dog person at heart. And I think yeah. that probably told you your little heartstrings. Maybe. Yeah, I, I felt for Shelby or crypto. Uh, I, I wanted good things to happen. And I, I didn't and I didn't even want the bad dog to die in the, in the van. It wasn't his fault. But weren't the dogs the freak of the weeks, kind of? And also, when you introduce the dogs, you're, you're introducing them in a grocery store. Imagine how distracted those dogs must be by all those smells. Like, that's they not were easy. incredibly well-trained animals. These dogs should have gotten uh, uh, Emmy. That's how good they were. I mean, I, I can go on about it, and I will. But Ryan, take us off here. The episode opens with a heist as two dogs attack and rob a small town grocery store. Full, I got to start. I, I got to say, <laughs> when the van pulled up, it was the two guys like, we're we doing this. And then like, you know, they're going to go rob this grocery store. And then it just pans down and the, the grocery store owner sees the dogs. I thought the guys were the dogs. I thought they like uh, anamorphed into dogs. I could understand that. It and was that's confusing. A, that's what I thought was happening. Morphin time. These yep. guys are the dogs. Yep. Uh, Shout out to Walt. Yeah. Wow. And Shout also, out to Walt. why it's are you Morphin robbing time. a grocery store? Uh, you think they got a lot of money in a grocery uh, store? Maybe, 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 maybe the, uh, the meats are really hungry. expensive. They're hungry. Maybe. As a Rottweiler stuns the store owner, a golden retriever is able to pry open the safe and run out with the bounty. While the Rottweiler proceeds to <laughs> maiming the innocent store owner, Kill. the other dog, <laughs> crime dog, escapes with the bag, leaving the owners behind. As the golden runs away, we see a nearby Lois Lane driving and on her phone again. Ugh. Can't do that. <laughs> For the second time this season, she hits someone. This time, it's a dog. Yeah, come on. Get off your phone. But that's ser seriously, people are always on their phone, and this is what happens. You hit people. 
You hit dogs, you hit, you, and your life's ruined. Get off your phone when you're driving. If nothing else, this show is a PSA for that. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Lois continues her trip to the Kents. That night, Clark and Jonathan find the dog rummaging through the kitchen. While Lois tries to figure out how the dog was able to break free from being tied up, Clark starts to warm up the idea of a dog being around and agitating Lois's allergies. Tom's any you got to have memories of stories working with animals, particularly this dog. So, you know, they always say it's hard to work with animals. And I think a lot of this story I didn't mess with because it was fun to have a dog on set. No disrespect, but I know that the dog didn't smell great. Really didn't. I remember that. And also, a lot of times, I think I've said this before on the podcast, when when dogs are working on set, a lot of times they haven't eaten in like 48 hours. And that's how the trainer gets them to really respond and pay attention to them. So, But I remember the dog being really, really awesome but and as much as i wanted to shelby to pay attention to me it was like yeah yeah whatever he's got the food <laughs> you know what i mean it was like it was like a service dog like don't pet the service dog the next day chloe pulls up to the snowy farm in her bug clark discusses the difficulties of living with lois and chloe tries to get him to open up more about his powers and as they head inside clark chains the dog to a tractor however moments later the dog drags the tractor into the front lawn and begins whining to come in freaking dogs lois play. notices the strange occurrence so clark and chloe uh they try to play it off this is a cool dynamic by the way in the show now somehow knowing clark's secret but yeah. clark not knowing they know you know that that hasn't really happened before i mean with a main character anyway no well not only does she know but she's helping him and protecting him and no one's ever helped him before like that i mean his parents do obviously and but and i thought she played it well but also at times it was like a little too much like it was just like oh just you know like i don't know but i know and i was just like just play it like you don't know <laughs> we know you know we know you know and you would play it like you don't know when you're playing it to someone who doesn't know that you know <laughs> i i yeah after finding a microchip tracker under his skin uh and naming him clarky <laughs> Lois and Clark take the dog to the shelter to find his owner. When they get there, Clarky recognizes the shelter worker, Zach, who is one of the criminals who was using dogs for heists. After the dog gets aggro with the worker, Lois and Clark get very judgmental and decide to do the scanning themselves. After scanning the tag, the, the dog's identity is revealed. However, it's not a person. On the screen pops up Luther Corp Ooh, as the owner. Yeah. <gasps> Zach tells Clark that it must be a lap dog, even though it's obviously a retriever. We were just talking about this off camera about recently lost animals and how in the last week it's happened to two of your friends. It's happened to us. It's like crazy. Yeah, my buddies here we are. and Carrie, this episode. Their, their dog has uh, a growth and they say it's got like maybe six months to a year to live and it's just heartbreaking. They love that animal so much and it just it just destroys me it's just uh I, I it's just that's the biggest shitty thing the shittiest thing in life is that dogs don't live that long you've right? been through you've lost your dogs i remember bear bear right um yep and yep. uh they were on the set yep. all the time and you know losing a dog is the hardest thing i've ever had to deal with it is the hardest thing i've ever had to deal with i mean that and my grandmother's death. Um, Clark is skeptical now, decides to take things into his own hands. Zach heads to the back of the shelter to share the news with his brother, Josh. As they discuss stealing Einstein back, we see vials of green liquid, which they are presumably using for the, on the poor animals. We learn that Josh used to work at Luther Corp as a trainer responsible for creating super dogs. And later that day, we see Genevieve making another visit to Luther Mansion to see Lex. She learns how Lex was able to keep Jason in Smallville and tells him, she underestimated Lex's abilities. I thought that the idea of these guys trying to be brothers was a little too far. I think if they were in cahoots with each other, it would have been a little bit better because, I don't know. I just think they should have been partners. They didn't look related. But not brothers. I felt bad for the, the, no. the, the nicer guy. He was like, he didn't want to do this, but he still yeah. did it. So, you know, it doesn't matter what your heart says. It's your actions. So don't do bad shit. Well, <laughs> After telling her that paranoia is unattractive, let's suggest she teams up with Lionel to write a parenting book. That, I love those lines. I love when Lex just has a smirk on his face and he's like, you know, uh, you guys should team up to write a parenting book. 
Do you remember saying those lines and enjoying them, or are you kind of enjoying them? I, them I remember enjoying them. I always embellish a little bit, and uh, yeah. I like that. And, um, you know, she's a character, Jane Seymour. And um, she, when she comes on set, she's, she's very confident. She's doing her thing. And she's like, you know, I've been doing this a while, and she's sort of a legend in a way. And, um, you know, she was cool. She, she always knew her lines, and um, she was easy to work with. Um, it was cool. You know, it's kind of funny is like because this was 2005 and uh, Wedding Crashers is about to come out that summer. And like, she was the yeah, mom. When she's it's no sort of way. like the same. It's it's weird. It's like the same. But like 2005, Jane Seymour was a very specific role. A specific Jane uh -huh. Seymour. <laughs> she called her agent in, in the beginning of 2005 is like, I'm I want to work this year. I'm going to work in <laughs> 2005. Work. <laughs> Whether it's in the dog episode yeah. or not, I'm doing it. Back on the farm, Martha and John discuss the idea of keeping a dog. Jonathan's hesitancy to keep the dog is boistered when they find Clarkie destroying the dining room and eating the dinner that was being served. He just really broke that table in half, didn't he? Oh, my God. That was great. That was cool. I also, it was funny. John just kept saying, bad dog. Like, no, oh, that was that was my food. That's my table that I'm going to have to fix. Like, Ugh. it's just so like. I like that he really barked like a, a dog owner, though. I like that he was just like. Bad dog. I don't want to say it because Blanche will get sad that I'm calling her that. But um, bad dog. You know, and I, I, I like I like that. I I thought that's, that's your instinct is like I'm like I'm always like Charlie. Good lord. You know. Clark makes a visit to Luther Mansion on behalf of Peta to question <laughs> Luther Corp's animal testing. Lex tells him it's none of his business, but then goes on to share Lionel's canine testing with Kryptonite. Clark begins to talk about the dog he found and then gets defensive when Lex asks him if the dog is exhibiting any problems. You know, I, I like this, that Lex is honest. Like, he's not hiding this secret. He's like, well, they were doing this, and I stopped that. And, like, you know, he's not, like, going, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know, you know, because you don't want to get caught up in too many lies. And this is, like, he's kind of straightforward as much as he can be. Yeah. I, I like that. The, the quote that she said in this scene that got me was, if I understood my dad's insanity, I'd be a happier man. Or my, you probably said my father. I wrote that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. My, yeah, if I understood if my I father's underst insanity, I'd be a happier person. Because I think Clark just said, why is he text testing on dogs? And the writer's probably like, <sighs> here's a good line. Here's <laughs> just, my, my father's insane. As the cans clean up back in the farm, we see Jonathan get jumped by the same crazed Rottweiler. Clarky hears from inside and bolts outside through the front door window, which I loved, creating another mess to save the day. Both dogs run off after they hear a dog whistle. I, I really like that. The, the window jumping was really cool. Mm -hmm. That was dope. Yeah. Martha takes her husband into the hospital, and we learn that the dog bit through his freaking bone. Clark comes to check in, and Jonathan tries telling his son uh, to let the dog go because he's too dangerous but dad you said that about me you said i would do this and i'm your son why would we do this to a dog um i you know it's very it's it was very what's the word apropos or to or a parable mm -hmm. to what um society thinks about animals if they bite someone put the dog to sleep you know if they if they're aggressive they're aggressive and a lot of dogs are but there are some that can be you know fixed or helped or put on a farm or you know done so you know but their immediate response is to put them to death later that night inside the talon jason sits down with his mother genevieve he begins to ask about countess isabel and puts the pieces together about oh, lana's heritage god and his forced relationship with the high schooler rosenbaum's favorite storyline but it pays off uh feeling used jason is resistant <laughs> to anything his mother says However, Genevieve goes on to warn her son by sharing how Isabel was condemned by Gertrude and how Isabel vowed to wipe out Gertrude's heirs and that the Teagues are Gertrude's heirs. Lana's upstairs listening to the whole thing. So they, why the hell did Genevieve even try to get involved with Lana in the first place? To wipe her out? Lana is part of the lineage bloodline. So why not just get rid of her then? Well... Nixer, well, is whatever, it, in I mean, Paris. Is it, are they trying to get ahead of it? Like, just, I'll I'll use my son to lure her in, and then I will take care of it? They're, like, bringing attention to it right off the bat. I, I don't know. Maybe there's... 
I don't know. The next day, Lois and Clark break into the poop-covered Smallville animal shelter. <laughs> Clark breaks into a locker and finds a Luther Corp instruction manual that holds the details of some armored truck convoy. Clark wants to spring into action to stop them, but Lois is adamant on doing it together the slow way at 35 miles an hour. Ah. <laughs> uh, Clark showing up uh, while riding shotgun uh, to save the day is kind of funny. I mean, he would have totally ghosted on Chloe in this situation. He would have gone in like, you, you know, you got the swoosh and you would have disappeared when she wasn't looking. But yet he sits with her this whole time. And I was waiting for Lois to pick up her phone and Clark being like, you know, you shouldn't drive with your phone. That's you, know. <laughs> you might hit another animal. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Tom, I can't tell you how much therapy helps me and helps so many of my friends. Ryan uses BetterHelp. It is just something that I've, it's part of my routine. And um, BetterHelp's been with us a long time. And guys, the stigma is gone. Uh, getting help and, and feeling better about yourself and learning things about yourself, understanding is, is, is part of the process and so important so you don't end up old and miserable <laughs> it can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter maybe you thrive around people or maybe you need some more alone time therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery it's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries it empowers you to be the best version of yourself it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma Therapy with BetterHelp is just a good place to start when you want to understand you better. If you're thinking of starting therapy, please give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. It takes no time at all to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Talkville today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H E L P dot com slash Talkville. Lois and Clark stumble upon the Greenfeld brothers mid heist as they are transferring the money between the Luther Corp truck and theirs from the grocery store armory. Clark hops into the back of the truck, releases the cage holding Clarky, but gets weakened as a nearby kryptonite liquid spills onto the floor. And the brothers get back to count their riches and find a comatose Clark Kent in the back of their truck. They put him in the cage, proceed with uh, dousing the vehicle with gasoline. Whoa. Good Lord, Whoa. son. Aggressive. Very aggressive. That was, that was, I, I got a little uncomfortable in that scene. It seemed like a little long. Like, these, uh, what's going on? Are they burning? What's I mean, happening? Tom was in a cage. Yeah. Normally, these scenes would be quicker, but Clark has Lois in tow, so he can't just kind of show up or speed around. So, you know, they wanted to see the Clark and Lois of it all, and that's cool. But, um, yeah, I that cage was not fun. Luckily, Clarky tailed the truck the whole time <laughs> and was able to save the day. Good Clarky. He hops into the back of the truck, releases Clark from his cage, and then drags him out of the truck. Good dog. By the way, reading this, it sounds like a really crappy episode. If you read, just read this, it's like, wow, what, what? You wouldn't want to watch this episode. But cinematically and story wise, Somehow, you know, it worked better than what we're reading. The brothers use a flare to ignite the truck, but before they can get away, Clark stops them and chucks them against the side of a padded house. Clarky jumps. Yeah, what the F you was that? <laughs> he throws them against the house and it's like it bounces. The wall bounces. Not only that, but he throws them. He throws them into a mattress that is against that wall. He throws them into a mattress. This is like, That's I don't know, 1985 wall guy. Dude, that is just like, how do, how do the producers watch this moment and go, yeah, here's what you do. You see him going into the wall and before they hit the wall, we cut to Clark's face and we hear, and we never show that. <laughs> and we just assume he went through the wall or something. Why the hell do you got to see a bouncy? Hell, good. Lord! There were animals on set. I'm sure the director had a lot to deal with that day. Clarky jumps back into the truck, frees the Wattweiler, but then is trapped by a wall of flames. Clark returns the favor by jumping in, rescuing the dog, and then shielding him from a massive, massive explosion. Massive. <laughs> a big old explosion. 
just once, don't you want Clark to shelter someone and then stand up and turn around and his whole back is just burnt? <laughs> the clothes couldn't take it. I know I've brought this up before, but he doesn't have fire resistant. Yes, he has, he has uh, super clothing. He does have super clothing. Teflon. Yeah, he, he's not. He think that after every fire explosion, we'd find him like, for instance, this time lying naked with the dog because his clothes burnt off. <laughs> Clark should have a new shirt every episode and a new pair of pants, <laughs> new shoes, because if he's super speeding around, he's getting explosions like he's. Yeah, and then everything you got, should then, be on. All of his clothes should be on fire. Yeah, and then you got like the sheriff going, <laughs> "Mr. Ken, we found your jeans and your underpants at the scene of another crime. There's, what are your underpants? There just needs to be a doing scene. at every scene in Smallville. Do you remember Caroline, who was our wardrobe woman? She was she was so smart and so cool. If she's listening to this, she's like. That would be the worst thing ever, that your character gets new clothes every episode. That would be the worst. Explosion. Clark's naked. <laughs> no, from a production standpoint, yes. No, he needs to have like the the, the red jacket, the blue shirt. But it would be very funny to have a scene yeah, it's a Netflix, the gap. It's a Netflix like, show now. Mr. Ken, do you hear again? Yeah. <laughs> we found your Nikes burnt <laughs> to a crisp. <laughs> Can you explain this, Mr. Kent? Back on the farm, Clark calls out the vet to check on Clarky. After learning that his strength is normal again, Clark decides to name his companion Crypto. By the way, hmm. this is completely different. Let's go back to the episode Recruit okay. for a second. Why could Clark should never have played football because of all the drug testing they do in football? Right. So he inevitably would have to get urine from that Asian guy. His whole life, because they do drug testing as if he would throughout college, throughout whatever. So he should have known I can't do this because they're going to find my blood is super blood. All right. He's named his companion Crypto. Lex walks into the barn and receives a friendly growl from Crypto. After discussing mm. his armored truck robbery, he warns Clark that keeping the dog may be dangerous. But Clark decides to take his chance anyways. Later, Chloe goes to visit Lana, having Lana Banana. Having been asked to research the Teague family tree, she shares their French background, and Lana reveals that it's the same town that her family came from. Who cares? Mm. Back at Luther Mansion, Jason walks in expecting to see Lex, but instead finds Lionel in the office. During their conversation, Lionel warns Jason not to trust his son and then gifts him a print of the map of the stories of Stones of Power. The episode ends with Crypto getting a bath with his nice new blue collar and red cape towel. Martha and Jonathan walk in and the family all decide to land on the name Shelby. What was the reasoning behind it again? Uh, it was uh, Annette, Annette uh, Mama Kent's something to do with her family and her dog. The dog they had growing up was Shelby. Why do I remember that? I'm glad you did because I had forgotten. Highlights and lowlights. Dogs are the best. Lana, Jason's storyline getting more incredulous. Lois and Clark banter was at an all-time high this episode, and Glover getting back into storylines. Interesting things of note. Well, one of the of names known. Lois suggests for the dog is Bud, the real name of the dog playing Shelby. The episode ends with the Goo Goo Dolls Chirp. cover of Super Tramp's 1977 song, Give a Little Bit. The original can be heard on Lois Lane's car radio during the climactic earthquake scene in Superman, the movie. At Jeez. one point in the episode it oh. is his frustration at Lois calling the dog Clarky. Clark says, we're not going to call him Clarky, OK? We're going to call him Bear, which was Tom's dog's name or Bandit. Tom actually had mixed Akita named Bear while living in Vancouver. Yep. Yeah, pretty interesting. Now it's time for the hotline. Talk. Get ready. Hotline. Uh, we're going to start with patron privilege. Here is the hotline. Let's move it along. Gentlemen, Justin here, the patron saint of Smallville. Thought it was interesting that Crypto in the comics was originally Kal-El's dog on Krypton. They both got sent down and he didn't reunite with Kal-El until Kal-El was a teenager in Smallville. So I thought the placement of the episode in Clark's timeline in the show was interesting. So I don't know if that was done on purpose, but anyway, uh, just for Tom, any interesting uh, stories or insights about working with the dog? Had some cool scenes with pulling the tractor and that kind of thing. I remember it being, I mean, it's the first time that I had worked with, with a trained animal on set or an untrained animal on set, except for Michael. But um, <laughs> the it's different because as you're relating to the animal, the animal's not always there if you don't see it in the in the picture. 
Um, sometimes you're talking to a piece of tape or something. Um, and then also when the dog is there, you're actually hearing the trainer and seeing the trainer giving signals. So there's a focus that's a little bit different. Um, I, I do remember that, but it's also fun because the second, I mean, I'm a dog person just like you guys. And it's like, uh, it's just fun to have an animal inside, you know, it's, and I could see that John and Annette, when John was getting upset about the dog breaking the table, there was a playfulness about it because they're talking to an animal. So it alleviates a little bit of pressure because the focus is different than on a human being. Hi, this is Cat Daddy from Durham, North Carolina. Um, I love this episode because it was kind of an episode where Clark got some support from other people. You know, Chloe knowing his secret and being backing him up on that tractor scene and then also just getting rescued by the dog. And I, I just couldn't help but think he should have one of those stickers on his bumper sticker that says who rescued who. Um, anyways, I just wanted to hear about what That's y'all hilarious. think about the wholesomeness of this episode. And, and generally, I think uh, Smallville being a show that has a lot of wholesomeness in it. Yeah, the wholesomeness part, um, I liked it when they add that. And the dog added an element, and it was a humane storyline. Um, it shows you how in- inhumane people could be and how humane they can be. There's something about when you're dealing with animals where you don't need that filter that sometimes would be put up with other people. And I like that they added in there when Clark looks at Shelby and he says, I don't have to hide anything from you. I thought it it, it was cool because... That's always in Clark's mind is sort of what that spotlights in my in yeah. a way. And he gets to kind of be himself around this animal and that's very freeing. So I think that's that was my big picture takeaway from this episode was that one line. Hey guys, this is Laura calling from Germany and I'm a huge dog person and I was curious if anyone on set um really didn't like dogs that had to interact with the dog i can't imagine that but (laughs) Uh, i don't know i I don't think so um i hope not i i i I have a um disdain for people who don't like animals if you don't love animals there's something wrong with you i i really believe that if you don't like animals yeah i mean i i don't recall anybody being allergic or being scared i know when i was when i was doing cheaper by the dozen there was this really awesome american bulldog who i wanted to take home and some of the little kids were a little afraid. And I remember the trainer saying to them, if, if you don't like the dog, don't look at the dog. <laughs> Just don't look at the dog. And so when the kids, the kids would be like this and the dog was friend. I mean, just they were little kids and the dog and she bred doesn't was huge. He was a big dog. So anyway, Eric, um, Erica was actually yeah. cool with the dog. Probably. Yeah. I would. Yeah. As far as I remember, I think, I think, I think also Lois treated Clark like kind of a dog. Like a puppy. Yeah, she kind of did. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that I was think she same did. idea. Here's Daryl. Hey, Tom, Michael, and Ryan. This is Daryl from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, last time I called, you called me Darrell, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. So thank you guys for that. <laughs> Tom, it really looked like you had an absolute blast playing with the dog at the end of the episode. Uh, did you get a chance to bond with the dog when you weren't filming in order to help bring a scene like that to life? Either way, I just thought it was a very heartwarming moment. Anyway, thank you guys. You guys rock. I, listen, the short the short answer is no. I mean, in some ways you'd think, oh, let's get the actor together with the animal and let them like go for a walk together and play or whatever. But this dog, I mean, they're so well trained that they don't really care about what I'm doing more than they're watching where the trainer is and, and taking their direction from him. So, I, you know, originally I, I remember sort of being like, hey, cool. And then understanding that the dog really didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, Michael here from Australia. My question is Michael. season four, episode 14, Crypto. What was the fake glass made out of that Crypto slash Shelby jumped through? And how did they achieve that shot? I have no idea, but, um, you know, it's fake glass. It was kind of a fake, uh, uh, maybe, I, I don't know. Tom, do you know? I think, I think it was a visual effect. Remember we did that episode a couple of seasons ago where the girl turned into the wolf? And jump through, and I'm, I'm. Yeah, they probably did it in post. I'm 99 sure it's visual yeah, effect. I think you're right. Probably post. Here's Leah. Hey guys, Leah here in California. Not too many I'm visual effects lately. So crypto. I was wondering, Tom, how did you guys film the scene where you're fixing the beam with the dog, and was it fun working with the dog? Thanks. Love y'all. Bye. Yeah, it, it it was fun. I mean, again, I keep saying this: the dog was so well trained, it was it was easy, and. um relax and and sort of be himself probably more than we've seen him in a lot of cases especially when chloe's around saying she knows but doesn't know and <laughs> all right international folks crystal what's your favorite dog themed lead film oh there's 12 there's uh that's 
Oh, I, That's I a like good Shaggy one. DA. It That's was, a... um, I forgot what it was called. Um, but Shaggy DA, one of those movies. Um, but Turner and Hooch was fun. I like that. Yeah, all I can think of is just I think was Turner and Hooch, yeah. Was Air Bud. And, that, and they had all the straight to video Air Bud sequels. My old assistant worked Bannister. Bannister Bergen, he worked on uh, Air Bud, I believe. Is Air? I've never seen Air Bud, but I have a dog. I have a golden retriever that looks a lot like that dog from what I remember in my brain. Is that age appropriate for like little boys, like little I mean, kids? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I would they only, think they so, allude, right? I should put that on for them. They tonight. allude to a dead okay. father, but no one. And then uh, ain't nothing in the rule book that says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> Rosenbaum there rating system, Ryan. Rosenbaum rating. Honest, your gut. One. Tom. One half a rose. I'll give it a half a rose. I could not with the dog. So you liked it better than the recruit. Yeah, I gave that a bomb. I gave this a half a rose. That that's a step and a <laughs> half above. I will say though that at times this episode got really slow. Devin saved slow. how many people got saved? Death how Z many count. people died? Well, zero died. Store owner was in a coma, so three saved. Dog saved Clark and Jonathan. The Clark saved dog. 14 episodes, 9 dead, 29 saved. Series 101 dead, 132 saved. And now it's time for our favorite, Ryan's favorite scene. Ryan's right. favorite scene. Well, scene one, dog heist. Scene two. Dog heist. Is that the, just the grocery opening. store? Okay. Uh, scene two, uh, the dog showdown at the Kent farm. What was that one? Uh, where Jonathan gets bit. Oh, the- yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Be it. And scene so scene be it. three, uh, where the dog saves Clark. I'm gonna go. The dog save Clark. Tom, I'm gonna choose that just so I don't lose a rose to you because I'd really. Is that it? Know. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Just Stuck easy. Up. Just they're dog related. It's just nice. Yeah, I remember. I just remember watching this episode and knowing what I was getting into, not knowing actually what I was getting into. But when it ended, I was like. There was some fun stuff in there, and it was just one of those episodes. You had the dog, the crypto. You introduced this comic book, you know, character, um, and I, I thought there was some nice things to it. And it wasn't—I I didn't sit there in in agony like I did recruit. By the way, I watched the worst horror film the other night, last night. I'm so tired of Rotten Tomatoes, Ryan. They give everything 90, 100, and like, who is reviewing these movies? This movie, because we watch horror movies, and we, we had to watch, it was called The Frogman, and I wanted to like it, and there was just nothing redeemable about it. How anyone sit there, sat there and said, oh yeah, this is 90%, this is a great movie, is just asinine. Frog man. The Frogman. The Frogman. It's like a found, found footage thing. You don't need to. Watch it came it. Out maybe came maybe out. people like it. I, I don't know. I'm a harsh critic, but I just was like, all my friends were just like, what the hell just happened? But I, I am harsh. But like, when something's good, I really, I really will talk about it. And I'll get excited. But like, there's a lot of lot more bad than there are good. Try looking at Metascore. That's like a, a better amalgamation. Yeah, maybe anything. it didn't give it a huge score, but it still I, was. I, I've I've gotten off of Rotten Tomatoes too. I think it's just. Yeah. Sorry if I insulted anybody. I'm proud of the filmmakers for making a movie. I just talk. Talkville is brought to you by Rotten I'm, Tomatoes. I'm, I'm upset more with Rotten Tomatoes and critics than I am with the movie. If if, if it would have because you pay for it, it's like four ninety nine, and I was like, this is but you know, and then you, you just you yeah. get like, what the hell? I I I heard something recently. Uh, it was actually on NPR, and they were talking about the Oscars and and how do you find these movies and how do you rate them? And they brought up Rotten Tomatoes and they brought up the New York Times. And this person that they were talking to was what's what's interesting to do apparently is find as a critic that turns out to be helpful as you watch what they do because different critics are different things. And they were talking about you know the Rotten Tomato score not really being great. Yeah. And even on Netflix when they when they suggest things to you how that it's the whole all, thing doesn't I think the really add up. Something to do with there's a hand in it. They're paying people. They're choosing certain critics. Yeah. They're you know, they're hiring certain people that work. For, I, I think there's something going on because these scores, even like the the movies that are, you know, big blockbusters, they're given 100 percent, 95 percent. And these movies are not anybody yeah. with eyes 
can look at these movies and say <laughs> that was average at best. Why did it tell me it was a great 90 percent? Rotten Tomatoes can go to hell. And I'm not just <laughs> saying that because they gave my movie back in the day 13 <laughs> percent. I don't That's get what it. it is. Oh, no, we got to the root I've, of never it. Even, I've never even looked. No, up my it doesn't movies. matter. We should, we well, should first do of that. all, they, they wanted my producer made the mistake of giving the critics during Oscars our movie, which was, you know, boobs and farts <laughs> and, you know, romantic, just a bunch. Of, it was like a, a college throwback, like a Sandler film. And it was like, why, why are we getting this reviewed? The best review was the, uh, the, the the Village Voice, and it said, Rosenbaum manages to do uh, what Sandler does for a fraction of the price. And I was like, ha ha, yeah, that was good. A, kind of a compliment. It was, I didn't care. But like, I, it wasn't that. It's just like, I want to watch movies and go, they gave that 65. I'm like, you know what? That's right. Well, l- let me say this. I just looked up Smallville on um, Rotten Tomatoes, and they gave it a 78%. And the average audience score is 68%. Audience score is well, more important. The critics were higher than the audience. Well, on that one, but I think the, the I think the audience yep. is probably right right there. I mean, I mean, Smallville as a series, it, it's a good series. I'd say 78. Probably, they're probably accurate for the first time in their life there. I think so. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's I think 78 sounds accurate. Are we going to be able to use any of this since we're shit on Rotten Tomatoes? That's it for the episode. Stick around next week as we get blessed with another episode of Smallville and talk about season four, episode 15. It's called Sacred. Uh, let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at Talkville Podcast or at Talkville Pod. Show support by please joining patreon.com slash Talkville to support us so we keep doing this for you if you're enjoying it. More information, it's all there with the hotline number and the description, show's description. Write a review, spread the word. Um, look at my link tree at the Michael Rosenbaum and find out where Tom and I are going to be. We love you. And uh, Tom, why don't you say our special line? Always hold on to Schmallville. To Schmallville. All right, now it's time for the shout outs. Can't forget our beautiful people, our beautiful patrons. Patreon.com slash Talkville. Join today. Get your name shouted out. Here are the top tiers we love. Nikki G, Leanne P, Raj C, Santiago M, Little Lisa, Thomas, Tom Turner, Shane W, Sophie M, Betsy D. Where are you, Betsy? I think I sent you something yesterday. Abby P, Ray H, ha da da. Hope the baby's good. Karen Apple M, 99 more. Leilani N, Brett G, always hold on to Smallville. Esteban G, Garrett W, Bob K, Kimberly L, Tom N, Jason W, Osama A, Glenda the Good Witch P, Lana, rhymes with banana, W, Nancy D, Brian G, Sarah W, YVR Grips, that's Vancouver, uh, Anna M, Amanda R, Teddy127. Michael P, Ryan R, Jordan M, Randy B, Craig G, Jorel, Heather and Greg, thank you for the question. I made Talkville say... Butts, Brian H, Eric K, Kristen B, Nanine W, Stephanie K, Darth, Achilles, Finky, Early, is on time. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Chalar Kent, okay, thanks for me. I made Talkville say Miss Chalar Kent. Uh, damn, who's that? Jeanette E, Deadvid, General Zod, Theodore, Jim and Jay, I hope you are, Big D, Doug R, Carlos C, Tommy Z Boston, 68, Ken the Limmer Guy, Corey L, Mr. Hallmark K, Jesse C, Claire M, D Brown, Karen Era M. Look at that. It only took me four years to get that one. Eldon Supremo, Leslie V, McBurts, Ginger Moose. Please remember Janice from NC. Okay. Christoph S, Michelle M, Drew. Uh, mandolin. Do you play a mandolin? No, I play a guitar. Okay. Left side, upside down. Uh, a right side upside down. Sebastian F. Wolfie. Love you, Wolfie. Dak Flando. Stephen the Grocery Checker. Matthew. Uh, Stephen uh, actually is just down the street from me. I see him once, sometimes twice a day. I love that guy. He just got it. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great dude. I love talking to him. Uh, Matthew and Lincoln B. Charlene A. The Coopers. Marion Louise L. CGO. Not C3PO. Cindy C, Shannon for Fanantina E, Matt Rick, Jen T, Jen Toll, just kidding. Jess D, Randy S, Cassie B, Red A, Felicia R. I feel like I need to do more of these because you guys do all the talking through the whole episode. Um, Rachel D, Steve, and Nate Danger. When you're rich, you aren't crazy, you're eccentric. Chicken Flower, Sammy Sharman, Carrie Ann, Patrick R, the Alexander Castle, Daryl E, Charlene A. 
not to be confused with Charlene, Lady L, Spicy, Spicy Chicken, Jenny B, Anna B, Monica T, Yale M, Jeffrey K, Pick Kenobi, previously on Smallville, Matt C, Deep Pro, Sajal, and Devin, Chadwick B, Keith B, Sheru, Sheru, we love Sheru, she came on one time, Major Paradox, the patron saint of Smallville, Libertariat, Christy H, Olga and Prokop, Biagio C, Cal, Cal L38, Lady J, Mignon, Mignon, A, Cody from Alaska, Diane V, Diana V to be exact, the Salty Ham, Murphy C, David, and Madison H. Guys, I got to tell you, it's it's only taken us, you know, almost four seasons to get this list, but we continue to see new people. So thank you for joining. It really helps. It helps us continue forward. So thank you. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe we'll end up finishing this whole series. We'll We'll see right now. We'll with see. your guys' help, we'll we're, we're rocking it out. I wonder when we get to season seven, when when Lex leaves, you're just like, peace out. You're just going to peace out of the podcast. It'll be me and Ryan. <laughs> uh, you, Ryan's like, I have to come record. I go, record what? Talkville, you're not on it. And then Michael will, Michael will call in questions because he doesn't understand the storyline. It'd be great. Episode, uh, season seven, episode eight. Where's Lex? Is that him? Is Michael back? No, I'm not. That's actually be funny. <laughs>